Minister Poop, all is yours. Thank you, Brother David Maloney, and good evening, everyone. And let me say it's a joy to be back with you sharing the word of God. We have started on a journey, an incredible journey actually, since July 2023. Then we took a much needed break in October to attend to Ministry Matters. And here we are again to continue on this journey. As you know, the topic we've been dealing with is the person called Jesus, how well do you know him? Now, I gave an outline for the study, so I will have to repeat it because I'm aware that we will have new uh, listeners on. So I'll just give you the outline and then we'll take it up from where we left off. So the outline is as follows. The pre-incarnate Jesus, the human Jesus, Jesus, the Son of Man, Jesus, the Son of God, Jesus, the Messiah, Jesus, the Jew, Jesus, the Galilean, Jesus and the Sabbath, Jesus and the law, Jesus, the last Adam. That's where we stopped. Well, we still have quite a bit to go. We have Jesus, the ultimate sacrifice, Jesus, the prophet, Jesus, the great high priest, Jesus, the king, Jesus, the lamb of God, Jesus, the I am, and Jesus, the soon coming king. As I said, we stopped at Jesus, the last Adam, so we are picking it up at Jesus, the ultimate sacrifice. So, Father, I pray for clarity of thought this evening. I pray for your anointing that, oh God, you will give us understanding hearts as we look into your word. I pray even now, Lord, for divine revelation in the name of Jesus. Amen. And as I've been saying, by the end of the study, my intention is that all of us, will know Jesus intimately, we will love him passionately, we will serve him wholeheartedly, we will share him eagerly, we will become more like him daily and eventually live with him eternally. That's my goal, that's what we are all hoping for. The more we, mo the more we know Jesus, the more we become like him. Now let's look at Jesus, the ultimate sacrifice. As you're aware, we have been using as our base scripture, Colossians chapter 2 and verse 9. It has not changed, for in him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. For in him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Now, I used the word ultimate sacrifice ultimate i use ultimate because there were and still are several other sacrifices that were and are still acceptable to god and i will call them i have placed them into two categories that is the pre-christ sacrifice or we could say sacrifice bc or sacrifices bc and the post Christ um, sacrifices, sacrifice AD, that were accepted by God. Also, there are very many sacrifices that are neither orchestrated by God nor accepted by God. But every God requires some form of sacrifice. Every God, whatever God you serve, if you check into your religions and your belief, you will see that your God requires sacrifice. So let's look at the pre-Christ, before Christ came to the earth, the sacrifices. God dealt with the world in dispensations. So before Christ came, sin was in the world. So what happened to the sin? How did we deal with that? Under that dispensation, animal sacrifices were done and accepted by God for different reasons. I will give some detail. Now, before Christ came, I want to repeat that, animal sacrifices were done and they were accepted. I'm telling you that because Christ has come. No longer then is it required that we offer any animals to any religion that requires of you 
to bring something that they can get a blood sacrifice, you need to check that out because it is not in keeping with the dispensation under which we live. Amen? I want to say that. I want you to understand that because some religions might tell you bring a fowl, bring a goat, whatever. Once you have to bring something to offer as a blood sacrifice, I want you to know that it is not required by God in this dispensation because Christ has come. Leviticus chapter 4 and verse 3 tells us that there was an offering offered, an animal offering. If the priest had sinned, the Bible said that he was supposed to bring an animal for his sin and a young bullock without blemish unto the Lord for a sin offering. So at that time you offered an animal for your sin. Leviticus 5.10 also tells us, and he shall offer the second for a burnt offering according to the manner and the priest shall make an atonement for him for his sins which he had sinned and it shall be forgiven him so you see god accepted the animal sacrifice before jesus came so i want to call that sacrifice purification because it made the sinner pure and accepted by god so that animal sacrifice was for purification but it was temporary then in Genesis chapter 22 and verse 13, after Abraham proved to God how, how obedient he was to his request to sacrifice his son, the Bible tells that, that God provided a ram, a symbol of God's provision. So here it is, God provided a ram that he could offer for sacrifice. So we look at the, the animal being for purification, and now we are seeing it as a symbol of God's provision. Then in Exodus chapter 12 and verse 13, that was another reason. God also allowed the lamb to be slain for the covering of the homes of the children of Israel during the Passover. That was a symbol of God's protection. When that lamb was slain, and the blood was applied to the doorpost of every Israelite. When the death angel passed, it passed over the children's children of Israel's home. It did not um, enter their homes. None of their children died, their firstborn didn't die, as it was in the land of Egypt. So we see again that the lamb that was sacrificed for the Passover was for protection, but that was also temporary. Then in Genesis 8, 20 to 22. As Noah came out of the ark, he was now celebrating the faithfulness of God. Noah and the occupants of the ark, what happened? They offered a sacrifice unto God, and that was a symbol of God's preservation, but that was also temporary. Then in Leviticus 3, 1 to 5, there is a peace offering that you offer another animal, and that was for pacification. When you want to make sure things stay peaceful, you would have done something, or the relationships are not as they ought to be, you can offer a sacrifice, and that's what I call pacification. So here it is, the animal sacrifice as burnt offerings were acceptable by God pre or before the coming of Jesus Christ. But then, after Jesus came, there are still sacrifices that are required of us as believers. It may not be, it is not, not may, it is not animal sacrifice, but we are also still expected to make sacrifice. But remember, the ultimate sacrifice is who we're going to be talking about in a little while. First Peter 2 5 gives us a little understanding there. The Bible tells us that we are lively stones. We have built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices. So here we have to now offer sacrifices. The sacrifices without whom our Jesus Christ, let me say that again, Jesus is indeed the ultimate sacrifice. Let me read that scripture. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. 
So our sacrifices are being offered by, we are doing it, but we are offering it by Jesus Christ. But Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice without whom our spiritual sacrifices will not be accepted by God. Without Jesus Christ, our spiritual sacrifices will not be accepted by God. That's why the scripture I gave you, 1 Peter 2, 5 says, it is acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Some of our spiritual sacrifices include our bodies. Romans 12 and verse 1 tells us that we should present our bodies as living sacrifice unto God. And it is only our reasonable services. So truly, our bodies don't belong to us. This is the temple of the Lord. So we present that. What else can we offer to God as a sacrifice? Our praise, Hebrews 13, 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. So our praise is supposed to be a sacrifice. As I come a little closer, I'm going to tell you, a sacrifice is something that costs you. If it doesn't cost us anything, we are not sacrificing. And then what else? How can we offer a sacrifice remember the ultimate sacrifice as i get into it you will see the great price that jesus paid the ultimate sacrifice this is only our response to his sacrifice our giving according to philippians 4 18 but i have all and abound i am full having received of epaphroditus the things which were sent from you an odor of a sweet smell a sacrifice acceptable and well-pleasing to God. So when we support the work of God, when we support the servant of God, it's a sacrifice that God is well-pleased about. Philippians 4 and verse 18. We love Philippians 4, 19, but it is based on Philippians 4, 18, that God will now supply all our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen? Above all, above what I just gave you, were accepted, as I said, because of Jesus, the ultimate sacrifice. If we do all this, if we give our bodies, and we give our praise, and we give our gifts, and we're not doing it in the name of Jesus, it profits us nothing. Only today I read something that really grasped my mind. I wish I could have shown you. I looked at the video with the war going on in between Israel and Palestine. This young man, US Navy, yesterday, only yesterday, he gave his life as a sacrifice and he's there shouting, free the Palestinians. He lit himself a fire in front of the, um, the Israeli embassy in the US and he just let it from his pants up and they are shouting drop and roll drop and roll he refused to drop and roll because he wants to die for the cause he died they came and they were spraying him with the fire extinguisher and all that and they got the top part off and his feet were still burning and he would not even beat his feet because he wanted to die for the cause no but that may be noble it may be very noble he's shouting as he died free the Palestinians. But any sacrifice without Jesus Christ is not worthy. The Bible tells us that God does not delight in burnt offerings, but a pure and a contrite heart, he will not despise. Had he used that same fervor and call out to God with a pure and contrite heart to free them, God may have very well intervened. So let's make sure that our sacrifices are in place, uh, properly properly focused properly planted and the very very motive behind our sacrifice is jesus christ amen first corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 tells us that christ our passover is sacrificed for us he is the ultimate sacrifice to to to, to be a sacrifice imagine jesus is a sacrifice he sacrificed. He is the offerer and the offering. He is just 
to be really the ultimate. There is none to be compared with him. A sacrifice cost. What did it cost Jesus? A sacrifice cost God. What did it cost God? A sacrifice cost us. Here it is. What does Jesus sacrifice? Jesus' sacrifice of his life. What does that mean for us? We could look back and say over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died, and yeah, we could say that, but what does that sacrifice mean for us? That sacrifice meant that Jesus demonstrated a perfect example of humanity. Jesus exemplified a perfect person as a human. Philippians 2, 8 tells us that he humbled himself, sorry, of humility. He showed us humility. If we, if we want to see what humility resembles, if humility was a person, if humility was um, an object, we would say Jesus is the definition of, you, of humility. Because I'll tell you why. It's okay to be humble when you're poor. It's okay to be humble when you are dependent on others. But when you've got all power, to be humble is a really big thing. Because here it is, you've got power to lay down your life and take it up again. Why are you humiliating yourself to be crucified by the men that you created? That's humility. He humbled himself. He's the perfect example of humility. Philippians 2, 8 again, he's the perfect example of obedience. He's the ultimate sacrifice, the perfect example of obedience. He was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, which I understand was for common criminals. Uh, yeah, yeah. Jesus could have just lied down and said, that's it. But his blood was shed. He is also the perfect example of submission. I know we struggle with that word, but if we want to know what it is to be in submission, let's take a look, a closer look at Jesus Christ. He is also the perfect expression of God's love. And I'll give you the very favorite scripture, John 3, 16. God so loved. He is the perfect expression of God's love. God, I believe if God had a, a, a chance to, to, to do something else because he loved his son and he would have tried to spare his son, but he so loved us that he gave what caused him the greatest pain. When he turned his face on Jesus, it was a father who was actually turning away from the sorrow and the sin that his son was bearing. Oh, how he loved us. Perfect expression of God's love. It, he is also the perfect example of forgiveness. If you want to know how to forgive, look at Jesus. The Bible tells us in Luke 23 and verse 34 that Jesus cried, Father, these men, Jesus was really a beautiful person. Hear me? Be I couldn't be Jesus, boy. These people are killing you. You should say, Lord, send angels and strike them down. But here is Jesus in Luke 22 and verse 34. What is he saying? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They really did not know what they were doing. They knew they were killing him, but they did not know that that, that same death that they were imposing on, on him was for their life. They didn't know that. So Jesus says, seeing that they didn't know that, forgive them. They think they are just killing me, but they don't know that I'm doing this for them. How about that? I tell you, he's the perfect example of forgiveness. You are killing me. I'm not sure I could pray that prayer if you bring a gun to my head. I am not sure. I'm not saying I wouldn't. Father, forgive them. The ultimate sacrifice. Jesus said, for they know not what they do. He forgave those who mocked him. You heal others, heal yourself. Come down from the cross. You save others. He forgave the thief on the cross. He forgave those who mocked him. He forgave those who killed him. And he forgave him who denied him. The ultimate example of forgiveness. 
And what qualifies Jesus to be the final and ultimate sacrifice? We see what it means to us. It means that we have a perfect example to follow, the perfect example of humility, obedience, of submission, of love, of forgiveness. But what qualifies Jesus to be the ultimate and final sacrifice? What? Because many greats have risen up after Jesus and claimed to be him. But what qualifies Jesus? Jesus like no other, he is the sinless, spotless, perfect Lamb of God. Jesus, like no other, is the sinless, spotless, perfect Lamb of God. First Peter 1.19 tells us that we are bought with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. His sacrifice was perfect. Jesus is sacrificed like no other like no other made grace and forgiveness available to all other people would have done what they did and i said may have been noble but it didn't reach me it did not reach me and i doubt it reached you but here it is that jesus's sacrifice like no other has made grace and forgiveness available to all romans 8 tells us tells us Romans 8, 12, for I will be merciful to the unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. So he has made grace and forgiveness. And when he forgives you, you know, sometimes I look, <laughs> I haven't done it in the very recent past, but I've had thoughts. I look at some ladies and they look so beautiful. God has done such a perfect work, except they tell you what they've been through, you would never believe that they've done what they did. These ladies are so polished. God, God just, Jesus just did a perfect job. You wouldn't believe they had how many children before they were married. You wouldn't believe what happened. You wouldn't believe that they were smoking and, and they abused them. They, they look like me, man. They look like Christian and you would not believe what we've done. And that's what forgiveness does. You look at some men and, and they look, oh, that brother is a good brother, but you sit and talk to him. You would not believe that this man used to be hooked on drugs and do all kinds of things in the past. But when Jesus forgives you, when he forgives you, there is no recourse there is no smoke, no smell of smoke on you. Nobody could say what you've been through. All you are seeing now is that you are clothed in the righteousness of God. So he forgives like no other. That's the sacrifice. He said he will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities. He will remember no more. Hebrews 8, 12. Then Hebrews 10, 14 tells us, for by for by one offering he had perfected forever them that are sanctified so jesus's offering like no other has made grace and forgiveness available to all so now we can be sanctified no other person who would have died for any reason can bring sanctification to you or to me he is definitely the ultimate and final sacrifice Jesus, the sacrifice like no other, paid the full price for sin. Paid the full price. Galatians 1 4 tells us that he gave himself for our sin, that he might deliver us from the present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. He paid the full price. And you know what? The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. The wages of sin is that, but the gift of God, because he paid the price, I'm now just receiving a gift. I don't have to pay again. He has already paid that price. Listen, I tell people, sometimes when you sit and you look at your own life, you wonder how could God in his infinite wisdom, who would have seen you before the foundations of the earth, love you and me so much? 
so much that he paid the full price. You don't have to pay. You just have to receive what he has done. And as you receive what he has done, offer your sacrifice now to him in thanksgiving for what he has done for you. Because now you are doing your sacrifice in his name. Jesus' sacrifice, like no other, is superior to all other sacrifices. Hebrews 9, 13 and 14. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctify it to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. His sacrifice is superior to all other sacrifices. The blood of bulls and goats, they, they serve their time. But I remember telling you it was temporary. But over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died and it is still, it is still effective. It is permanent. It is done. So, like no other, he is superior. Jesus was the final sacrifice for sin. After him, it doesn't matter how much we do what we do. It does not matter how much we give our bodies to be burned. It will not be for sin. You might do it to appease your mind, but it will not be for your sin nor for any, it would not work for your sin, nor for anybody else's sin. Jesus was and is the final sacrifice for sin. Hebrews 10, 10 to 12 says, by which we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. And I put this in bold, once for all, once for all. With the sacrifice that I mentioned, the pre-Christ sacrifice or the BC sacrifice, before Christ sacrifice, every year the sacrifice had to be made, every year. But here is Jesus, once and for all, the final sacrifice. And then the Bible tells us, and every priest standeth daily ministering and offering, oftentimes, the same sacrifices. I, I, I say, well, geez, God really had a lot of animals, but, but the cattle are a thousand years, but it's not only, it's not a thousand cattle, it's real, real animals. If you had to be offering them daily, and then they had the annual ones, and that's how it was. And they did it, which could have never taken away sins. You hear me? It was temporary. Under that dispensation, God accepted it. But this man, but this man, this ultimate sacrifice, this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Now, when the ultimate sacrifice sat down, it meant not only what he said on the cross, it is finished, but it meant this is it, it's final. No other, none, none, this is it. So he is seated at the right hand of God because he has accomplished that which he was sent to the earth to do. Jesus, the ultimate sacrifice. My question to you today, he has paid the highest price anybody could pay because you see it's only one life each of us have one life each of us has one life and if i could take that one life and lay it down for some sinners some wretches the bible says ah oh, what love we were not good we were not good friends. In fact, we were enemies of God. But he decided when God 
told him this was the purpose that I'm going to manifest my son in the earth, that he might destroy the works of the devil and that he would reconcile man back to me. He laid down his life. He laid it down. So he is the ultimate sacrifice. And the Jamaicans say he's a winner man. He needs to be applauded for that which he has done. He has done beyond human comprehension. He gave beyond what you and I would have even thought, so just so that you and I can now have a name, that you and I can now have a position, that you and I can now have a status, and you and I can now be redeemed into his fold. Let me ask you this evening, having heard what a great price he has paid. What is your response? What is your response? Would you offer your body? Would you offer your sacrifice of praise? Would you offer your offerings in his name to show that you appreciate what he has done for you? But what about you who are not even a believer? Would you offer your life to him? and say yes i want to accept jesus because he has loved me when nobody else will he loves you when no one else cares he cares and that's why he came let me pray for you today father your word would have gone forth i pray in the name of jesus that even now and those who would listen later as they will call upon you, Lord, that you would reach out and save them. Do a great work of transformation. Father God, let us see, let us understand the ultimate sacrifice that Jesus made for us and that what he has done is finished and final. And we thank you, Lord, speak into our spirits that we respond to you positively. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to encourage you to put your questions in YouTube, on YouTube, put your questions in for me. I like you to respond. I want to get your comments so that when we come next time, even on Facebook, I know Facebook goes off after a while, but you put it there. I'm going to check it very quickly. So we're going to get your comments. We're going to get your questions on Facebook, on YouTube, and you can even put it on Zoom for the members. I'm going to go there and I'm going to respond to your questions the next time we show up, which is next Tuesday, God's willing. And I will tell, well, I gave the outline so you know where I'm going to be going and we're going to take it up from there. God bless you and thanks for listening. Back to you, Brother David. Thank you, thank you, thank you.